um, the positive digital leaders that we want to see in our communities. Um, good. So, <clears throat> Um, I will also say that uh, this curriculum was um, created by a teacher um, called Diana Graber, and she works at the Journey School in California. It's a Waldorf-inspired charter school, um, and it's a grade six through eight curriculum, and LCWS decided to bring it down to fifth grade in 2020 after the pandemic, um, when we were just seeing an increased use of <coughs> due to the situation we were all in um, and realizing that we really needed to lay this foundation sooner. So we've been doing that and it's been uh, very successful. Uh, we, we do this digital citizenship um, unit sort of very slowly and intentionally throughout five and fifth, fifth and sixth grade. Um, so there's a few other things that I wanna say about this curriculum, which is, um, it's down here at the bottom, uh, the first is that it is proactive, right? So we want to reach students early so that they have a foundation upon which to make these ethical decisions online. Um, and we also want to empower them, right? Um, we want to empower them to use technology confidently. We want to empower them to use it wisely. Uh, similar to sex education or uh, drug prevention education. We have to be able to talk about these things in order to inform us and help us make healthy and positive choices. Right? The second thing is that this curriculum is not fear-based and it would be so easy to teach out of fear. So we could certainly teach that this is a toxic time suck <laughs> that is concerning and hideous and depressing um, and violent. Right? Um, it, it's, so, it's such an easy place to go because it's an easy place to go. Like those things are, are real, right? But there's also this amazing part of this technology that is empowering and connected and social and builds community and helps um, movements gain traction that change the world, right? This is an amazing platform for art and for creativity, right? So we don't want that to be lost because these are the digital leaders of the future, right? Um, good, so proactive, not fear-based. Um, and then the last thing is that it's behavior focused. Right? So it is about neurology and not technology. And that, what that means is that um, much of what we do in cyber civics doesn't actually use technology, especially in the beginning, right? Especially in this digital citizenship uh, part here, where you know we're working on uh, basic citizenship, right? Um, basic behaviors that have to be established in real life, in in-person life, be before they can be translated online. Things like being nice and not reacting, thinking before you react. Um, all right, so um, I want to say just a little bit about the things that are in these levels, uh, just so that you have a sense of what's being taught. Um, and back here, if, uh, if you want to grab one on the way out, um, <clears throat> there's a little handout that lays this out pretty nicely. Um, about the sorts of topics that are taught throughout these levels. So um, when we're talking about digital citizenship, what do you, what do you think that that means? Come on, digital, digital citizenship, what is that? Being responsible. Being responsible yeah, online. online. Good, anyone want to add to that? Not being meaner to people than you would be to their face. Nice. Protecting yourself. Got it? Okay. Yeah, so this level is all about uh, creating norms for appropriate and responsible technology use. So in this le <coughs> these lessons, we're talking about um, the principles of citizenship, both online and offline, right? So um, one of the exercises that we do is the students um, 
we, we talk about some of these principles of good citizenship, they take a community that is not that is an offline community, um, and they say, you know, how does this community use honesty? How does it use responsibility? How are we um, courageous? I think the example that I put out here is uh, the five principles of good citizenship in a family. It's very endearing and sweet. You should definitely take a look. Um, and so we're talking about that sort of thing before we're talking about, okay, so what does that look like in an online book group? Or what does that look like on Instagram? What are the principles of citizenship when we translate that to the online world? What does that look like? Yep. Um, so principles of citizenship. We talk about our digital reputation. Somebody want to say what you think that means or what you know that to be, digital reputation? Be careful, be careful what you post. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, or text. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so one of the things that I say in almost every class is there's no erase button on the internet. <laughs> right? This is a hard concept for students to grasp. I'm going to talk a little bit about that more in a second. Um, we also talk about cyberbullying, very important. We talk about the difference between cyberbullying and digital drama, both very hurtful. Um, there are some differences. Um, this lesson includes, um, um, yeah, this unit includes lessons on, on hate speech, um, which is often the first time students encounter hate speech is online. Um, we talk about online privacy. We talk about um, your digital record, right? what you're leaving behind. Um, so that's the foundation. We want them to have that before we're talking about how to actually use the technology, which we definitely want them to know. So in, in the second year, um, we are talking about um, information literacy, building on those skills of this foundation. Um, what do you need in order to find information to analyze it and then to use it? So um, we're talking about things like research skills, how not to plagiarize, um, how to read terms of use, how to be cognizant of the kind of personal information that's being collected. Um, so we'll talk about uh, how to read a results page. And um, one of my favorite things to teach is about filter bubbles. Um, um, managing sort of the algorithm that gets created when we participate in social media. Um, we talk about online safety. We talk about scams. Right? We need to know about that. Um, and then we get to talk about things like Creative Commons and uh, fair use, public domain, um, Wikipedia. Yeah. And this is done all without going online? <clears throat> um, so much of it, yes. And in, in the second level, there's sometimes a video that I'll show or um, we will, I will bring up a screen and we'll say, you know, like, let's take a look uh, like especially when we're doing like search queries, um, we sort of experiment all together. Um, one of my favorite things to do with the filter bubble lesson is to have them go home and search the same thing from two different devices. So, um, and, and then we're talking about what the algorithms, like why is it different, you know, in this part of the country even, as opposed to if you search the same thing somewhere else. It's fascinating. Um, Good, so uh, eighth grade, they are really ready to take that next leap, right? Um, they wanna participate, they've got a great foundation. Um, we're building on this information literacy, we're talking about media literacy, um, which is the ability to access and analyze, to um, evaluate and to create media. Um, <clears throat> in this level, we talk about consumption versus production. So what does it mean to be a consumer versus a producer? Um, we talk about persuasive technologies. We learn about analyzing information. There's a whole unit on fake news where we look at different uh, ways, different from different lenses around fake news. Um, visual literacy, seeing stereotypes in media, clickbait, deep fakes. Um, we talk about sexting. Sometimes I bring the sexting a little earlier. If, they, if the class needs it. Um, 
And then in this love level, there's also a great unit on um, advanced research skills, which goes along really nicely with the eighth grade projects that our students do at this school. So it's a year long independent project. Um, they use a lot of research, uh, need a lot of research skills for that project. And so CyberCivics can support that. Um, and the great thing about this curriculum is that new things are added all the time. So this year, there's a new unit on AI. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. So um, one more thing before you're going to pretend to be students, um, which is I, I want to just put this into your mind, which is that we really have three choices as parents and teachers in the digital age when we think about our students and children. We can be digital enablers where we can step back and say, I don't actually know what to do here. So here you go, you know, Google it. I don't actually, you know, I don't know. Um, free reign <coughs> digital media, right? We could do that. And in some places there may be times for that, right? These all have a place. Um, a digital limiter would be somebody who is, you know, maybe basing some decisions of, off of fear and saying, we're not going to go here at all, right? <clears throat> a digital mentor can sit side by side with their student, with their, with their child, and say, we're going to learn this together. One of the things that I'm constantly telling my students is that this technology is really new. It's very new. And adults in the world are still learning as well. So we can learn together, right? So digital limiter has its place as well. You should check out um, there's some resources for you. I'll just look at that. Um, and I'm available if you want to ask questions at the end. Um, but really, we want to be digital mentors. This entire cyber civics curriculum aims to mentor students. Um, so tonight I want to share just a little glimpse about the type of exercise that would happen in the classroom. Um, this is a lesson that I teach in fifth grade uh, where we're talking about our digital reputations. Students at this point have learned that they either have or will have an online or digital reputation. Um, we've talked about sort of all, a digital reputation is all of the online activities. Um, sort of the, the accumulation of that, right, that lives on no erase button on the internet. Um, and that all that online information can be searched and copied and shared and seen by a large invisible audience, right? So this is what they have at this point before, um, before they do this lesson that we're about to do. Um, so, um, the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we all have common terminology. And I'll speed this up because I'm pretty sure that most of you probably know these things, right? But we want them to know what is a social media site, right? Many students are surprised to find out that YouTube is social media, right? So anything where there's a back and forth communication is social media. Oftentimes I find that parents are surprised to find out that gaming is social media. And that's often the first thing that students are engaging in. Often at a very young age, even from parents who say, oh, we don't do social media, right? And then this world of online gaming is, um, is a powerful thing, right? Um, it's 100% social media, yeah. <laughs> Um, good, and so we talk about that. We talk about uh, what it means to tag somebody. Um, when you tag somebody, a photo or post that you tag may be seen by the person that, uh, that you tagged and by all of their friends. So example, if you tag Sam in a photo and share that with your friends, the audience could expand to include all of your friends and all of Sam's friends. And we talk about that in relationship to our digital reputation. And it's a really hard thing for students. It can be kind of scary, right, to understand that you don't always have control of your digital reputation. And oftentimes, these students have digital reputations before they even know they have digital reputations because we all think they're the cutest things in the world and we have created a digital, digital reputation for them before they even have that consent. 
So if, one, if you walk away with one thing today, um, I want you to hear that in class, this comes up pretty often, that students have their picture taken and posted without their knowledge. So just ponder that, think about it, because um, it might be an opportunity for you to have a conversation about you know, having that be more of a partnership. I try to tell them, it's just because we love you, right? <laughs> um, but as they start to become middle schoolers, they want to say in their digital reputation because they're learning about it at school, right? And they want to help cultivate that. You'll see over there that um, there's a couple examples of digital billboards, which um, it's this exercise where I want them to say, okay, so what do you want to be forward facing on the, on the internet if and when you have a digital reputation? Um, to get them thinking, well, I want my social activism to be present. I want my art. I want my interests, right? Instead of always saying, well, you know, you wouldn't want to post that. You wouldn't want to post this, right? So, proactive, not fear based. Make it focused. Okay, good. Um, you check me on time. I can just talk about this forever. Yeah. In the time, how much time? I mean, do, do the lesson. Do the lesson. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, maybe somebody can help me. I'm going to pass out two scenarios. Um, you don't all, actually, there's two scenarios, one front and one back. Um, you and the person sitting next to you can read through it, and you don't have to write anything down, but the students would, and then we would talk about the, the answers that you gave. Are you okay with someone telling um, I'll do this. Um, one of the things that this lesson, and actually this whole curriculum test you want to take and pass it down, is that so many of these scenarios online are not so clear cut, and often the tricky business lies in the nuance, and that there's not always a clear answer. And scenarios like this help us tease that out to the students. So, Sure. Y'all are so much quieter than middle schoolers. <laughs>
often lead us to bigger conversations. Um, and I noticed that in the group as well. So um, one thing I want to leave you with is that um, LCWS supports digital citizens, yes? And also, you all are the strongest community to support the digital citizens that you send to us, right? And that there's so much power in the parent-to-parent -parent connection um, so, you know, talking with your class parents, um, having shared agreements about group texts, knowing, you know, having every kid in your class know that when they come to your house, phones go there, or that you read their, their texts, and that's just a known thing, right? These sorts of things can happen when parents are talking to each other, and there's so much power in that. So, I hope that, um, this gives you just a little glimpse into what we're doing here and um, know that I am easy to find. So if you want to you know, bounce ideas off another adult, sometimes that's, <laughs> that's all we need as parents trying to raise children in this age is just to have somebody to talk this through with. Um, these are complex things that our kids are dealing with and the community wants to support that. Yes? So I'm gonna leave you with this verse, which is what we actually uh, say in each class before we start cyber civics. Um, and if you want, if you can read my handwriting, you can do it. Sorry, I'm gonna stand here. Um, <clears throat> so it goes like this. In this virtual age, let us sink our hands into what is real. In this age of light speed communication, let us learn how to use our inner voices. In this age of increasingly powerful machines, let us learn how to use the incredible powers within. Thank you all so much. And I think that, I think Abigail is next, or Emily. I'm just going to introduce her.